welcome to this course on services marketing now we are talking about the second section that is applying the four p's of marketing to services now in this module 12 and 13 are dedicated for this uh, to understand distributing services through physical and electronic channels so uh, these are the two modules that will talk about distribution of services so let us start with module 12 in this module we will try to understand the four key questions that form the foundation of any service distribution strategy that is what, how, where and when. We will describe the three interrelated flows that show what is being distributed. We will try to familiarize ourselves with how services can be distributed and distinguished between distributing core and supplementary services. Then we will recognize the issue of delivering services through electronic channels and the factors that have fueled the growth of service delivery via cyberspace. Now keep in mind that the factors that may affect the, the physical delivery of service, uh, services may, may be entirely different from uh, when the services are delivered through electronic channels. So uh, in this we will try to recognize those issues. Then we will try to understand the determinants of customers channel preferences, who would like to buy from where either online or offline, how, which type of online uh, stores they want to go to. Know the importance of channel integration and then we will describe the where, that is place decisions of physical channels and be familiar with the strategic and tactical location considerations. And then we will describe the when, that is time, decisions of physical channels and the factors that determine extended operating hours. Now, let us for a moment look at this uh, figure that is distribution in a service context. So now at the top it starts with key questions for designing an effective service distribution strategy. And the, the key questions are what, how, where and when. What means what flows through the channel, how means how should service reach the customer, where means where should service be delivered and when is when should service be delivered. So, what flows through the channel? Information and promotional flow, negotiations will flow and product flow that is uh, for example, core and remaining supplementary services. How? That is how should service reach the customers? Customers visit the service site, service provider go to their customers, transaction is conduct conducted remotely that is via the internet, telephone, mail or email. And the channel integration is the key for this how. Where is, where should service be delivered? Is strategic locations consi considerations, for example, customer needs and the type of service. Tactical considerations, for example, specific location characteristics and location constraints, for example, due to required economies of scales. When? When should the service be delivered? Customer needs, economies of incremental opening hours that is fixed versus uh, variable cost, availability of labor and use of self-service facilities. Now this will, the, the answers to this question will determine intermediaries that is what tasks should be delegated to intermediaries, their roles, the benefit that they will get and the cost for example of franchisee agents and distributors. So in, in, in all the three cases or in each of the three cases the cost will be different. Now that will determine distributing services internationally, how should the services be distributed internationally, export the service concept, so here only the concept is being exported, import customers or the possessions and deliver remotely and that will then decide entering the international markets, how can the value added be protected? In exporting the services, licensing, franchising and joint ventures and foreign direct investment, which mode is more appropriate uh, so that we can uh, protect, our, protect the value added. So note that the information and ne negotiations are types of supplementary services, but we are listed separately. Here to emphasize their importance in any service distribution strategy. So information and negotiations they are more uh, they are more important in services that is why they have been listed separately. They are more important in services as compared to in products. So now, to, now let us look at each uh, of these things in detail. So what is being distributed? 
The first is the information and promotion flow. Distribution of information and promotion material relating to the service offered. The objective is to get the customer interested in buying the service. The second is flow of negotiations, reaching an agreement on the service features and configurations and the terms of the offer so that the purchase contract can be closed. The objective is often to sell the right to use a service that is sell a reservation or a ticket. So, in these kind of situations, these negotiations uh, they happen. The product flow, many services especially those involving people processing or possession processing require physical facilities for delivery. Here distribution strategy requires development of a network of local sites. And for information processing services, product flow can be via electronic channels employing one or more centralized sites, for example, internet banking and distance learning. Another important uh, component of the distribution strategy is how should a service be distributed? Does the service or the firm's positioning strategy requires customer to be in direct physical contact with its, with its personnel, equipment and facilities? If that is so, do customers have to visit the facilities or the, of the service organization or will the service organization send personnel and equipment to customers own sites? Alternatively, can transaction between provider and customer be completed at arm's length through the use of either telecommunication or physical channel or distribution? Should the firm maintain just a single outlet or offer, or offer to serve customers through multiple outlets at multiple locations? These are the different questions that need to be answered. So, there can be six options for service delivery. Here, let us start with the, uh, uh, start with the left. The, the, here the nature of interaction between customers and service organization and then availability of service outlets. So, there can be a single site or there can be multiple sites. Now, when the customer goes to the service organization, so the example of a single site is theater or a car service workshop. For multiple sites, it can be a cafe, cafe house chain or car rental chain. When the service organization comes to customer, so, the example for single site is house painting, mobile car wash. So, the company is going to, customer, to the customer's doorstep. Multiple site example include mail delivery, auto club road services. When the customers and service organization transact remotely, that is through mail or electronic communication. The single site includes, the example for single site are the credit card companies and local TV station and for multiple sites, they include broadcast network or telephone company. Another important issue in distribution of the services is how should a service be distributed. So, one thing is that the customer may visit the service site. So, the key factors that need to be considered in this situation are the first is cost that is for example, the rentals. The second is customer catchment areas and convenience of service outlet location for the customers. So, what is the, what is the cost of the area where the, where, uh, that will be hired by the company, where the customers will come and visit them and what will be the catchment area from which the customers will come and how big the ca catchment area will be and then convenience of those uh, locations. Also, firms have to make decisions on where to locate supermarkets or similar large stores relative to the homes and workplaces of future customers. So, where, where do we have to locate our stores? So, should they be near the homes or near the workplace? Are we talking of the current customers or potential customers or future customers? When service providers, they go to the customers. Going to the customer site is unavoidable whenever the object of the service is some immovable physical item such as a tree that needs to be pruned, installed machinery to be repaired. There may be a profitable niche in serving individuals who are willing to pay a premium for the convenience of receiving personal visits or home delivery. For example, mobile car, car wash, so you do not have to take the car to the service station. They will come with a mobile uh, car wash and, and wash your car at your, at your place. 
and office and in home catering. So, those catering services which, who delivers the food in office or in home. In general, service providers are more likely to visit corporate customers at their premises as compared to individuals in their homes, reflecting the large volumes associated with business to business transaction. So, as a, as a rule of thumb, companies will visit the corporate, the, uh, the, the corporates. Uh, rather than the individuals because of the, the size of the business that the, these corporates give to these companies. When the service transaction is conducted remotely, developments in telecommunications, online technology and sophisticated logistic solutions have spurred many new approaches to service delivery. A customer may never see the service facilities or meet service personnel face to face when dealing with the service firms through remote transactions. Many service providers offer solutions with the help of integrated logistic firms such as the FedEx, TNT or UPS. Storage and express delivery of spare parts for aircraft that is B2B delivery, pickup of defective cell phones from customers home and the return of the repaired phones to the customers B2C pickup and delivery also called as reverse logistics. Any information based product can be delivered almost instantly through the internet from almost any point on the globe to any smart device via high speed in internet technology. Even service businesses that involve physical core products such as retailing and repair are shifting delivery of many supplementary services to the internet. So, the core service may not be shifted, but the supplementary services are being shifted to the internet closing down and they are closing down their physical branches and relying on speedy business logistics to enable a strategy of arms length transaction with their customers. Now, factors that affect customers to use online services. The first is obviously the convenience, so you can use the service whenever you feel like. Ease of search, obtaining information and searching for desired item or services, so you can sit at home and you can uh, keep on searching uh, about the uh, for the information about the service and the various alternatives and that leads to a broad selection. So, now you will uh, at any physical location you may fi find lesser number of service providers as compared to online. So, now you have a wider selection to choose from and then that that there lies a potential for better prices. 24 by 7 service with prompt delivery that is particularly appealing to customers who, whose busy li uh, lives leaves them short of time. So, when there is 24 by 7 service delivery, so they, uh, the customers can get or buy services any time of the day or night. Now, uh, let us look at what are the channel preferences among customers. Recent researches have identified the following key drivers of four channel preferences among customers. The first that we talked about earlier is the convenience. It is a key driver of channel choice for the majority of consumers. Service convenience means saving time and efforts rather than saving money. A customer search for convenience is not just confined to the purchase of core product, but, but also extends to con convenient time and place. People want easy access to supplementary services to especially information reservation and problem solving. And for complex and perceived high risk services, people tend to rely on personal channels. For example, customers are happy to apply for credit card using remote channels, but prefer a face to face transaction when obtaining a mortgage. So, now you see that when we are talking of complex and, and uh, where the risk is perceived to be high. So, in that case customers they may they are happy to apply for credit card because the, the use of that credit card and uh, what credit they, they, how much credit they take from uh, on their cards uh, is easy for them to monitor. But they prefer to, fa to uh, prefer a face to face transaction when they are obtaining a mortgage because of the several terms and conditions or the fine print that may be there which is not so clearly visible to or understandable to everyone. So, individuals with higher confidence and knowledge about a service and or the channel are more likely to use impersonal and self-service channels. Customers with social motives tends to use personal channels. Channel integration. New delivery channels have created an inconsistent and frequently 
disjointed experience for many customers now because there the, the 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 old channel and the new channel they they exist and there are a variety of new delivery channels so that have created an inconsistent and this disjointed experience for the customers so customers take advantage of price variation among channels and the markets and this is strategy is known as channel arbitrage so while in a physical store the service delivered may be for a different price and on an online store or from an online store the service delivered may be charged differently so it is obviously it depends upon the customers from they where they buy and that that uh, uh, phenomena is uh, called as channel arbitrage so service provider need to develop uh, develop effective pricing strategy that will enable them to deliver value and capture it through the appropriate channel another important question facing a service provider is where should a service facility be located so frequently a two step approach is used here one is the the first step is the strategic location consideration which is to help identify the general types of location a service firm should aim for and then the second is the tactical considerations to choose between specific sites of a similar type that fits the overall location strategy let us look at this strategic location consideration in in some more detail so understanding customer needs and expectations competitive activity and the nature of service operations so first thing that need to be understood when we are uh, looking at we are trying to understand or we are trying to evaluate a location is to understand the customer needs and expectations one competitive activity that is the second and nature of service operation so these are the three things that have to be kept in the, into consideration that is the first thing that you need, need to do in strategic location consideration the next thing is firm should make it easy for people to access frequently purchase services especially those that face active competition for example retail banks and fast food restaurant so when we are talking of uh, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, services which are purchased frequently so firms should ma make it easy for people to access them because they, these are more frequently uh, purchased services so markets can be segmented by accessibility preferences and price sensitivity then there are some tactical location considerations the first thing is when we are talking of tactical location consideration is population size and characteristics so how is the how big the population is or how small the population is and how it and what uh, what this population is made up of the age groups the genders the education the economics etc etc pedestrian and vehicle vehicular traffic and its characteristics so whether it is uh, the traffic moves on that road 24 by 7 or it is it is generally used only office hours and uh, how and what kind of vehicles are used on that kind of road convenience of access for customers who all are competitors in that area nature of nearby businesses and stores whether the labor will be available in that location and whether the site location is uh, availability of site location rental cost and contractual conditions and regulations so you may be able to identify a location but but there is no place to hire or the rental cost are too high or that contractual conditions and regulations are too uh, too stringent so these are some uh, some tactical location considerations in a strategic location consideration we are looking at the general types of location of the service firms and we have to understand the customer needs and expectations competitive activity and the service operations and we can also use this strategic location considerations can also be used to segment the markets while in the tactical location consideration these are the the seven points that uh, need to be considered let us look at location constraints the need for economies of scales and operational requirements may restrict choice of location airport for instance are often inconveniently located relative to travelers homes offices or destinations because of noise and environmental factors finding suitable sites for construction of a new airport or expansion of existing one is very difficult task 
So, sometimes the location is not suitable or not available at all. So, then there comes another important issue that is of innovative location strategies. Innovative distribution strategies can be at the core of a powerful new service model. Those are the first innovative location strategies that of mini stores. An interesting innovation among multi site service business involves creating numerous small service factories to maximize geographic coverage. So, instead of having one big store, there are mini stores so that the geographic coverage can be maximized. Another Another, another is locating in multi-purpose facilities. The most obvious location for ser consumer services are close to where customer live or work. So, then we, we, uh, we look for those locations where the customers li live or work and that is more appropriate in case when we are offering cons uh, consumer services. For some highly responsive service operations, the standard has become 24 by 7 service. 24, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week around the world. Key factors determining the opening hours of a service facility include the customer needs and wants. So, do the customer want a 24 by 7 service or they do not want the economics of opening hours, whereby the fixed cost of the facility and the variable cost of extending opening hours including labor and energy cost are weighted against the expected contribution generated from incremental sales and potential operational benefits. So, now when we are opening opening the, the facility for, for longer periods of time, we will require more, more labor and we will also require more energy in, uh, or electricity etcetera. So, when, so, now this has to be worked out what, what will be the, uh, what will be the cost of opening the, uh, the facility for a, for a longer period of time and what is the, what will be the, uh, what will be the revenues that we will generate, the incremental revenues that will, that will be generated for by opening these, the facility for the, those extra hours. The factors that encourage extended working hours, the first is the pressure for the customers, the, the customers needs and wants. So, there is a growing number of two income families and single wage earners who live alone, need time outside normal working hours to shop and use the services. So, when, uh, when both the husband and wife are working or there is only a single wage earner. So, at what time uh, he will go to, uh, to get that service? So, th th they require that the, the service be delivered over a longer period of time. The service facility should be open for uh, extended period. Then the changes in leg legislation support has declined for the traditional religious view that a specific day, Sunday is predominantly cult uh, Christian cultures should be legalized as a day of rest for one and all regardless of uh, religious affiliation. So, these kind of regulations have also changed. Economic incentives to improve asset utilization. The incremental cost of extending hours trend tends to be relatively modest, but if it reduces crowding and increases revenues, then it is economically attractive. So, un so when you are deciding on whether to open a service facility for a longer period of time, so, the, 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 fig, the incremental cost may be uh, modest, but it should lead to reduction, uh, reduction in crowding during the regular, uh, regular hours and increased revenues. So, there are costs involved in shutting down and reopening a facility such as a supermarket, yet climate control and some lighting must be left running all night and security personnel must be paid 24 by 7. Even if the number of extra customers served is minimal, there are operational and marketing advantages to remain open for 24 hours a day. So, even so, if, so, uh, so the company may want to op remain open for 24 hours a day because there are some, some additional advantages uh, that uh, they will uh, have. Availability of employees to work during unsocial hours, changing lifestyles and a desire for part time employment have creating have created a growing labor pool of people who are willing to work in evenings and nights. So, there the availability of employees have gone up. Then in addition to those, there, there is automated self-service facilities also. So, self-service equipment have become increasingly reliable and user friendly. Many machines now accept card and cell phone based payments in addition to coins and bank notes. So, every, so, it is becoming all the more, uh, more easier to, uh, to have extended service hours. 
installing at unattended machines may be economically feasible alternatives for location that cannot support a staffed facility unless a machine require frequent servicing or is particularly vulnerable to vandalism the incremental cost of going from limited hours to 24 hour operation is minimal so that makes the availability of service uh, uh, that makes the 24 by 7 availability of service more uh, easy and the cost is uh, minimal so to conclude in this module we have discussed about responses to the four questions and how to go about answering these four questions and the four questions important for designing any kind of distribution strategy especially in case of services are what how where and when the customer service experience is a function of how the different elements of the flower or service are distributed and delivered through selective physical or electronic channels so you keep in mind that important is that how we are di distributing the core and the supplementary services through physical or electronic channels so many many a times the core is delivered through physical and the supplementary services are delivered through electronic channels so so various combination are is, are in vogue, vogue and these are the three books uh, that from where the material for this module uh, is taken thank you